Okay, train that's like delayed 1035, cross country service to Edinburgh Waverley. Service calling at Dunbar and Edinburgh Waverley. So this will be the first of two videos from Scotland. Uh, it's mid-January at the moment, uh, so I started the new year pretty strong by coming up north, way up north. I'm staying in Edinburgh, but today I've come to Dunfermline uh, on the train up here, and I'm currently just sat by a war memorial with the abbey and the uh, palace ruins in the background. So I'll have a look around there. Such fantastic sandstone on the palace, it's brilliant. And the abbey has a medieval Norman nave and then the sort of east end was uh, rebuilt in the 1820s and that's where Robert the Bruce is buried. He's got a new tomb monument that I think was given by a very wealthy earl in 1889 I believe. Um, but yeah it's a really really lovely place. I feel like Dunfermline is a typical northern city. It is very Scottish of course but I feel like, especially up the east coast of England, going north in Scotland, when you get to Newcastle, all the Victorian buildings suddenly get really massive and I can't help but just look up. So in the newer, in the newer parts of these towns, I'm just constantly looking up at these awesome buildings. But then, almost at the click of a finger in Dunfermline, you just enter the old town and you've got the uh, town hall, um, and there's, there were, what was there a guild hall that's now Weatherspoons, of course, and that would happen anywhere in the British Isles. Uh, but then you suddenly turn here, and then suddenly you're in the uh, churchyard of Dunfermline Abbey. And what a place it is! So I've taken a bit of a little short video inside, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. walking through Pittencreef Park which was given to the city of Dunfermline by Andrew Carnegie. Uh, you've got really great views of the Abbey Church behind you, the medieval west front. Um, you can probably see it actually just poking out there in the background. Yeah and there's an old medieval tower, the ruins of one here, uh, Malcolm Canmore. Canmore was on the sign, I paid a little attention to it. But yeah it's a, it's a brilliant place. Um, in H.V. Morton's book which I've brought with me um, in Search of Scotland. He writes briefly on his visit to Dunfermline and uh, he has a bit of a hard-on for Andrew Carnegie um, but he paints, a, he, he paints a really vivid picture of the investment and his influence on the city and uh, his, his love affair with the old town and things like that so it's been really uh, helpful to bring that book with me and um, I'll probably read a couple of passages of that out um, one of the finest things which Carnegie did for his native town was to give Pittencreef as a public park. In this lovely glen birds are tamer than I have seen them in any town. Children are encouraged to make pets of them, and of the squirrels which come and shake their tails almost under your feet. Praised be God for all his gifts. 1701-1707, this is John Forbes' house. Uh, Praise be God for all his gifts. Seems to be a common phrase which I've seen on a few buildings near Grass Market in Edinburgh as well. A beautiful house this there. With its sort of orange ochre exterior rendering. H.V. Morton was right about the squirrels. I mean, if you stand still in Pitt and Creek Park for even two seconds, they will descend upon you. And they're quite big, scary squirrels as well. So I've descended in Pitt and Creek Park into one of the really picturesque glens. 
with the stream running through it. There's the abbey up there, the church. And I've noticed on this sign here, it says St. Catherine's Chapel and Arms House. And I think I can see that up there. So that sign says it was described in a charter in the 14th century as being at the west front of the church. So if that's it there, then I think that's it over there. So this does look like what that sign described as St. Catherine's Chapel and or Almshouse. Um, but it's really hard to tell what it is from all the remains here inside the park anyway. Um, it's an exterior of some sort, some buttresses there, but I'm guessing the entrance may have been elsewhere and it's long since gone. But a nice bit of the park nonetheless. The experience of Dunfermline is unique. There can be no other spot like it in the world. Here is a great and ancient town, the Winchester of Scotland, which played its part as the capital city before Edinburgh emerged from the mists of history. Well that was it, I'm heading back to Edinburgh now. Uh, just a little short visit to Dunfermline, but really, really enjoyed it. Really pleasant experience. And the train station, the railway station, is lovely red sandstone. Very impressed with that. Anyway, yeah, back to Edinburgh now. I would have liked to have had a drink at the Old Inn, which was just opposite the Abbey. Uh, and it was where Dunfermline Athletic was founded in 1885. I do like a bit of football history with my church history as well. But that old pub was on the site of the house of a former treasurer of King James VI, which I thought was quite interesting as well. But yeah, a bit too early in the day for me to have a pint there, but uh, now I've got to figure out how to get over to platform one. But yeah, uh, see you for another video.